All right, so we've seen these less reactive carbonyl derivatives with reductants, and now we're going to look at them with our organometallic reagents. And what we saw with the organometallics is that they looked a lot like an H minus. And again, the organometallics we'd say are the S, uh, the organolithiates and the Grignards. Um, they have similar reactivity to our hydride reagents, especially our um, more reactive reductant, our, our we'll just say, our, similar to our strong reductant, <clears throat> which our strong reductant was lithium aluminum hydride. Um, so I think that at this point, you guys probably should be able to predict the product of this react reaction if we have an organometallic this metal could be a lithium could be a magnesium bromide with either of those what do we have to have also on this arrow we have to have this solvent so we could have thf um, and uh, we have an excess of this um, and uh, yeah so so go ahead and Try to predict the product. Draw some arrows for the mechanism um, and uh, try to predict the product. So pause it, try that, and then restart the, the, the video. Okay, you did that. Um, so what's going to happen here? Our organometallic is essentially CH3 minus with lithium potentially or potentially magnesium bromide that is the counter ion. So we're, we're thinking about it in terms of uh, kind of an ionic type character thing. And that is going to be attracted to the partial positive carbonyl carbon. So we can show that add in there. And it's going to form that same tetrahedral intermediate that we saw with H minus. So um, we have the O minus. We have the CH3 that just added. And then the electrons can come down and kick out our X, whatever X is. And on um, that, would provide a ketone, and then we would also have our X minus, and in this case, our X minus could be an OR minus or a CL minus if it's an acid chloride. So acid chlorides are another type of carbonyl derivative. It's the, it is more reactive than esters because chlorine is such a good leaving group. Um, but essentially, this equilibrium is still going on. Um, but if there is some of that organometallic around, it's going to want to react with the ketone because that's a really strong electrophile. So the CH3 minus, another equivalent of it, will then add to that ketone, producing the alkoxide, the O minus. Um, and then essentially, um, we will add water to that. Um, so HOH2 plus, and it would just do a proton transfer, an acid base reaction to provide us with the final alcohol product. Um, so, is this a new mechanism? New mechanism? Um, well, look a few pages ago. This looks literally identical to the lithium aluminum hydride reduction of an ester. Um, if you just swap out CH3 minus for H minus, it's the exact same thing. So hopefully you're not being like, oh, I have to memorize a new mechanism. Hopefully you're thinking through the mechanism, reasoning it out for yourself. Um, and then if you can reason it out for one of them, this one should be pretty much the same thing. Last blank said blank equivalence. Blank equivalence of organometallics. Add to blank. Um, and what do we see? We saw one equivalent, two equivalents. Two of them were used. So two equivalents of organometallics add to esters or acid chloride. So we'll just draw R, CO2, R. Um, and then I'll put an or R C O C L. That's the condensed formula of an acid chloride. So um, hopefully this doesn't feel new and scary because it should look just like that hydride reaction. And, and really, since the first video from this chapter, what have we been saying? We've been saying that 
organometallics, hydrides, H minuses, nucleophiles add to the carbonyl carbon, and that's what we're seeing over and over and over again. Um, the new thing with these is that we have this equilibrium, but that should kind of make sense based on our understanding of acid base chemistry. Um, neither side is more or less reactive, um, so both sides would be represented, and then um, that reaction, the nucleophile adding to the carbonyl, again, should make sense. So, um, yeah, so now we're going to transition to another type of carboxylic acid derivative. All right, so what do these organometallic reagents do with carboxylic acid? So if this X is an O, that would be a carboxylic acid, or amides. So if this X was an NH, that would be an amide. Um, and uh, what did we talk about organometallic reagents? They need to have an aprotic solvent. Um, and uh, so I wrote in THF for that. Um, and the molecules that um, they're being reacted with cannot have acidic protons, right? Um, and it turns out that, uh, yeah, acidic protons or what will happen, acid-base chemistry would happen instead of the nucleophilic addition chemistry that we would want to happen. Um, and that's what's going to happen here, essentially. So uh, essentially, our, our organometallic reagent um, is either going to deprotonate the NH or the OH uh, instead of adding to the carbonyl carbon. Um, so we can kind of draw that happening like this. And that would produce this deprotonated intermediate. Um, and when we were talking about lithium aluminum hydride, this wasn't a problem. We said that lithium aluminum hydride can still reduce carboxylic acids. It can still reduce amides. And why was that? Um, if you go back to the amide video, um, what I showed happening a little bit was essentially the oxygen forming a bond to the aluminum species. And that makes it a good leaving group still. But with organometallics, we don't have um, a... a uh, Lewis acid that the oxygen has a high affinity for. Um, whether this is lithium or if it's magnesium, uh, neither of those are going to make this oxygen a very good leaving group. So essentially what we have is, and I'm going to pretend like this is the oxygen and not the nitrogen in this case, but it's the same for both of them. We have a molecule that has um, has essentially a very minimal amount of partial positive on that carbonyl carbon because we have a really strong electron donor right next to that position. So essentially, the carbonyl carbon is not electrophilic anymore. Um, so essentially, these Organometallics that are strong nucleophiles, strong bases are going to act as a base in the first step because that acid-base reaction happens the fastest, and then they're going to be stuck here. They can't add to this because there is no electrophilic position anymore on this molecule. Um, so essentially, uh, once we add the first reagent here, we're just going to be stuck in this situation right here where we've, we've made CH4 from our CH3 metal. Um, we have a counter ion over here, M plus, that's balancing that negative charge. But then as soon as we add our second step, our H3O plus, um, our H3O plus, uh, this would just reprotonate to reform the starting material. Um, so this would not be a useful reaction. Uh, we are not going to want to do this type of thing. Um, we, would, we would not use an organometallic reagent on a carboxylic acid or an amide uh, that has acidic NHs. Um, that would be a mistake. So essentially, organometallics are not useful with our CO2Hs, so that's carboxylic acids, um, and our CONH2s, those are amides. Uh, we would not use these organometallics with those types of functional groups. Um, so uh, that kind of finishes out uh, the utility of these organometallics. So they're, they're good at making carbon-carbon bonds, which is really exciting because we're organic chemists. So we want to make those carbon-carbon bonds. They're really good for reacting with aldehydes and ketones. They're really good 
with reacting um, esters and acid chlorides, but their weakness is that acid-based chemistry liability. Um, they can't add to esters, or sorry, they can't add to um, anything if there's acidic protons around, and if there's acidic protons uh, in the actual functional group itself, uh, that's going to make them no longer reactive, as we just uh, mentioned. So um, that kind of finishes up those for now. And next, we're going to learn about a new type of organometallic reagent called a cuprate. Um, cuprates are also referred to by some people as Gilman reagents. Um, that's a secondary way that they are referred to. Uh, but cuprates uh, have copper in them. Cooper, copper. It's Cu um, is the elemental sign for copper, so cuprate. Um, so uh, look forward to that. They have kind of unique reactivity, uh, and uh, that reactivity kind of goes all the way back to chapter 16 when we were talking about different resonance patterns. So you're going to have to build a resonance structure of specific molecules to understand where those cuprates will add to those molecules. Um, so they have very specific, special reactivity that differs from organolithiates or grignards. Um, so pretty interesting, unique chemistry.